everyone, today we're going to look at the CTT counter timer tachometer tachometer mode. And up here on my screen, I have the pages for the manual, and you can see that we have several different tachometer output modes to choose from. And what a tachometer really is, is it sets or brings in a series of pulses, whether it be from a, a sensor that counts teeth on a wheel like this one, or an encoder that measures linear line speed, anything that produces a pulse that we can then bring into the um, CTT in order to scale it and display what we want. So the different, uh, we have four different output modes for this uh, tachometer and you can see here from my timing chart, the first one is two low, one low, two meaning the output um, uh, contact and low means that if it's lower than the set value that we set then it will turn All right so something will happen and one low is down here so that's one low so it's lower than that so we, we create a area in which uh, the units are both on then we have a two low one high so if it's less than two then we have it off and if it's one high so anything higher the, the one will then turn on and we have two high one low so as you see here as it gets above two it turns on if it gets below one it turns on so what we want to do is match the output configuration of our output type to our application and then we have two high, one high. So there's the, again, the timing chart for that two high, one high. Then we have our videos from Automation Direct showing us how to program this in and a little demonstration of our TAC mode. Then we have wiring diagrams and the wiring diagrams will show you how to wire uh, the encoders and the pulses into the CTT. Then we have our dip switch settings. These are located on the right hand side of our CTT in order to set our parameters and set our output mode. Now we get into the programming of our CTT and we'll take a look up at our actual CTT and we'll hit and hold the hold the mode key for three seconds. And that gets us into the programming function. And the first one is our function, which is set for TAC, which is tachometer. We hit mode again. And now this sets our output mode. So right now we set uh, two low, one low. And if we look at, here's our timing chart for the two low, one low as an example. Hit mode again. We have our counting speed. And our counting speed is, is important to set because it depends on what we bring in. If it's a solid state device, like a proximity sensor or an encoder, then we can set it for the rate that's close to or equal to or greater than what we're gonna bring into that CTT. So for example, if we have an encoder and our maximum speed will be 4,000 counts a second or 4,000 um, signals a second, and we would set for 5k. In our particular case we have a relay output from a PLC and that relay output um, will oscillate on and off but the maximum number of times that we could possibly turn that relay on and off is going to be somewhere around 10 times a second. So because of that we will enter 30 as our value which is what we have up here on our screen. Hit mode again, this gives me my decimal point. Now my decimal point is used to, uh, with my pre-scale in order to set up my scaling factors for this tachometer. Hit my mode again, there's my pre-scale. Currently right now we have it set for, for the default of 1.00. So that means every pulse comes in, it just represents that same uh, unit up on my display screen. In our, our particular case, this is going to equal uh, hertz or frequency, so pulses per second, or 
uh, pulses per yeah pulses per second. So if we hit mode again, now this mode here is actually our power. So it sets up a time delay after we switch power on to the unit. Now our default is set for zero zero, but we can set anywhere from zero point one to 99.9 .9 seconds. So that means that don't do not activate your output relays until you sample that uh, pulse trade coming in and determine what happens. So we can set that up. So very nice feature. Then we hit mode again. We have averaging. Now the averaging will happen is every time that we bring pulses in, remember that it's the rate. So because it's a rate, we're dealing with over time. And because we're dealing over time, if we have that time frame a little too short, that means that we may miss pulses, especially around our set point areas. So this sets up a filter in which we can uh, place into the CTT in order to filter out this and make the output a little more stable for us. So if we look at it, our set range is 0 to 3. 0 mean no filtering at all, and 3 means 8 eight times so sample it eight times before we give an output so in this particular case we're going to use eight or eight times so we're going to set a value of three what you'll have to do in your application is experiment with this to make sure what makes actually sense for you in your application and the response time of your outputs so hitting mode again we have a reset which is set for 20 milliseconds so that that's the time it takes for the output to actually um, reset and then the hit mode again and we have our input type which is set for PNP. This means the way in which it's wired to the uh, CTT itself. Mode again brings us back up to the function again and it keeps cycling. So get out of this program mode we hit and hold mode again for three seconds and now we are running. You will see that we have on our screen both outputs on right here and we have a set value of one of zero so output one here is zero so because our tack is uh, equal to or less than that we have output one on and output two is again our present value is zero so again it's on as well so it's not above that if we look and hit the mode key we will actually see output 2 or set 2 value set for 2. So as soon as we get above 2 on our frequency coming in then we should see the uh, output 2 then go off. Anything above 0 output 1 will turn off. So the first thing we'll do is let's put a, a few pulses on here and let's try a 1 second uh, pulse. So every second we're going to get a pulse into the CT. So we started that and you can see here that it takes a little while because we have that averaging going. We toss up between 0 and 1 and then finally it can hit the 1. So again we hit the 1 so what we expect is because it's above the 0 that we set then output 1 is now off which is exactly what happens. If we turn that one second off, you'll see the delay it takes because we've, we've done the averaging. Okay, here we go. Now it's off. Now let's turn on our 500 millisecond timer. Now what happens here is that we're going up to um, two times a second. So we'll see a two on here. So 500 milliseconds equals two times a second. So you see again, everything seems to be working fine. We'll turn that off. And now let's put a 100 milliseconds or 10 times a second count into the unit and see what happens. Okay. So because of our averaging, you see a little bit of 9, 10, and now finally, finally it'll settle on 10. And this is why we do our averaging. So there's 10. So our frequency there, and you see now both of our outputs are now off. So the CTT is very versatile for any application. 
and as we discussed before CTT meaning counter timer tachometer all in one unit so your inventory then gets reduced so it's a great little unit great price point for this as well so all the links and documentation can be found on our website at accautomation.ca if you like this video and like to see more there are three ways in which you can help us out you can give us a thumbs up so other people can find this information you can subscribe to our youtube channel you can also go to acc automation and subscribe to our website when you do notification will be given to you every time we publish new content to the site you'll also get two free ebooks on numbering systems and robust data locking and the third thing to do to help us out is to tell a friend or colleague about the site all right that's it for now thanks for watching